What's up guys, this is Coach Ray and welcome to Harmless Sing Talk Podcast. In this episode, I'm talking one and only the GOAT, John Berzank. I wanted to ask some of the questions that in my mind has never been answered. Uh, not going into deep into topic, who's stronger or who felt stronger, but more talking about, you know, his rise in arm wrestling, his mindset behind training. And we touch on so many different subjects and I enjoyed the conversation very much. It's so great to see John back in arm wrestling. So I hope you will enjoy this as much as I did. Hey, Ray, what's going on? Hey, John. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's good to see you. It's good to, good see, to see you, you too. Yeah. You've been busy. Been arm wrestling a lot. Uh, a lot of stuff. Too much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> too much stuff. But yeah. Hey, well, Ben, you've been busy too. And you've been kind of, you're the only arm wrestler that I know who will have a match like six months in advance, you know, and three oh, matches yeah. for the, <laughs> you have Paul Lynn, you have Zulu, you have Engel. Yeah. And th- these well, are just the ones we know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. Chance Straw was kind of a, just at the spur of the moment, but um, then uh, Demetria, of course, was scheduled. And then uh, Paul Lynn, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little sore for uh, Paul Lynn. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I way overdid it with Dimitri. Um, so three weeks, three weeks is normally plenty of time for me, but um, this time it might not be enough. I, I'm feeling as, as the week has been going on, it keeps getting stiffer and stiffer. <laughs> so t- tell me about that match. You know, uh, did you expect him to attack through these two fingers where he kind of went? Um, I, you know, when I first got there and met him and saw how skinny he was and how skinny his hand was, I, I really thought that I wouldn't have any problem being able to couple him and being able to dominate the hand, but um, his back pressure is tremendous. Uh, he, his setup was really good. It just felt really uncomfortable. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, the hand wasn't there and you know how that goes. If you, if you end up messing up the first round and let yourself get in a bad position and then try to pull through it, yeah. you're pretty much you're, that, you're, that's you're the done. scenario for you're every just, round. <laughs> you had just done the rest of the rounds. I mean, I was just completely numb. So I was like, I just in survival mode. But, you know, looking back, I probably should have maybe just let that first match go and then try to reassess and, and fight fight for a little bit better grip, uh, you know, in the straps. But, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it all, it all worked out okay. But, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely whew, way stronger than I – well – I expected to be really strong, but then when I met him, I just I, I kind of let down. I was like, "Oh, okay, he's not that big. He, he how, how strong could he be?" And then oh shit, then it was a uh, you know monster match. But how big was he? Um, he said he was two thirty five, so we were about the same weight. I came in at two thirty five, so he was. Uh, okay. But he just looks thinner. His upper body just looks thinner. Is you know is I mean, yeah. if you look at him closely, um, you know he's got he's got thick forearms. It's just I guess his upper arms aren't aren't really big or developed like a lot of arm wrestlers you'd see with kind of a bulky, but he's wide. I mean, he's got wide shoulders, hmm. uh, but I guess the hand was the, the surprising thing. You know, he kind of, he's got, you know, long fingers, long, long hand, but just kind of thin, you know, normally a, a good arm wrestler has got a real wide, thick, thick. meaty, yeah. yeah, thick, thick, wide palm, but that wasn't the case with him. So but he set up really good. His back pressure was tremendous. He's he's obviously uh, you know quick, a fast hitter because he just you know he just took a bang out of position early on. Yeah, I, I kind of expected the match to go completely differently, and then uh, we're we're walking in Birmingham, and someone's like, "John's match is up," and we're looking at it. I'm like, <laughs> "What's going on here?" Yeah. But you know, you have to. Not always is going to look pretty, you know. Yeah, you know, and I like I said, I kind of went in not overconfident, but, um, I, I, I wanted to have some confidence in my, my hand and my cup. So I, I did set up a little bit lower. I didn't really protect, protect my hand as well as I should have in the strapping and, and get, keep my knuckles high and, and keep that riser, um, and try to match the riser with him. I was thinking, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dominate this and help, you know, do a pull of LeVon and just hang on to it. And just hopefully it, you know, it, I'm able to cup it and, yeah, that just wasn't the case. He he was able to strike me out of position, but but anyway, yeah, that was all, all good. <laughs> no, well, it ended good. Ended good. Yeah. No, other other than um, yeah. you know, I just never really pulled that way that hard. 
that it, it definitely it's it strained some elbow tendons that I thought I would never strain again just because of you know the shoulder not really be able to hit that hard sideways but uh, flat handed like that hitting that hard it's it, it showed up after about the third day and I knew I had a stinger I was like oh, okay that's that's that left a little mark but um, like I said it's been getting it's been getting stiffer and stiffer as the week goes on so yeah so how do you feel about Paul Lynn you know um. I'm going to have to warm up a little bit. I think you know, I'm still two weeks away. So I'm hoping that um, I heal up. I'm not going to have a chance to really do any, any more working out, any training. I thought about possibly uh, sneaking in maybe a workout tomorrow, but I'm just too damn sore. I mean, I think it would just be um, just, you know, wouldn't be good for me to try to sneak one in. So I think I'm just going to end up just licking my wounds and resting until Paul ends. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, what do you think kind of threat Paul brings? Is it again the hand pressure, the back pressure? Um, I think he's he he seems from what I watched of him, um, he seems to protect his hand really well with the front of his arm, you know, knuckles high back pressure, similar to a Travis Badgen or Dave Patton. And I suspect he's got a lot from what I see hitting other opponents, he's got a lot of upper arm or side pressure strength hit you know out to the outside so yeah. knuckles high back pressure with a hard hit so uh yeah just trying to position the hand and wrist to absorb that and stop it i think um i think uh the way i look at the match i'm hoping that he hits like that and puts himself out of position because i think i'm gonna kind of just uh, play the defense mode and 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 just try to put myself in a catchable position for that type of a type of a hit i'm not going to really try to move too aggressive off the off the start off the center <clears throat> and um you know if i can if i can just maintain a good position in the strap which i feel like i i gotta be able i have to be able to do that just because i'm a hand is you know so much larger um and if i can stop the match then i think i can you know i can bleed them after the first round so that's that's my game plan anyway we'll see how it goes but yeah i'm, I'm, I'm at most danger of just getting you know whacked real quick off quick off the ready go yeah. Mm, yeah that's that's always that that's the thing you don't want to that you don't want yeah you know when no, someone yeah. has that speed advantage you know yeah uh, be interesting yeah what well, well, how's your shoulder feeling you know compared uh, to when, when i saw you last time because then you had like a lot of problems especially shoulder is not any better not any worse um I've been taking um, that naltrexone, low dose naltrexone, which has helped quite a bit for just the the nights and the achy, just the basic st stuff. And um, I've been taking a lot of painkillers the day of. So um, I was able to shut it out with Dimitri. Uh, in the heat of the moment, um, you know, it, it, it suffers the day after or three days after or the week after um, it's, it's been yeah. sore all week, but uh I was able to, I was able to shut it off and, and just not think about it. And uh, surprisingly enough, I ended up hitting pretty hard with it. And it, um, you know, I guess it just, you know, it's, a, it's bothersome. It, it messes with my head because it cracks and pops and grinds um, when I pull slow and I think about it like in practice, but um, during a, you know, hard fought match, I think I can, I can block it out enough to, Enough, really enough adrenaline big yeah it's not a huge factor for me if i get stopped in a match i've noticed um like when i pulled Corey west uh, last year yes you know i felt good i felt good and then 30 seconds later it's like it mm. it loses the stability and it's like okay where normally i could be relaxed and feel like i'm i'm you know there and comfortable and sit there all day it starts to shake and rattle and then starts to kind of separate and make noises but so i know the stability isn't uh what it should be, but I've been, I've been working it every single day at, at uh, work. I'm mean, just doing just these, you know, shoulder lat pulls and just really just trying to bring the shoulder blade back and um, develop that area up. So, yeah, um, I don't, I'm not expecting great things, but I'm just hoping to be, you know, functional, somewhat functional. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're back. I'm super happy that you're back, but I asked about the shoulder because like, <laughs> few months in the future you're going to face uh, Zaluyev. yeah and uh, maybe he will try to top roll but most likely he will hit in that hook yeah well he's hit me in the hook before and you know of course i was a little bit heavier than i'm going to be slated to, to be pulling him mm -hmm. coming up in march but uh 
I think I just need to get my hand and wrist and forearm back to full strength again. Um, but yeah, no, I think if I, if I'm able to do the can opener on him, I don't know if I really need a tremendous amount of strength. He's, he's not like, uh, you know, it's not like a Dave Chafee or, a, you know, some of these big heavyweights that requires a lot of, a lot of side pressure once I get positioned. So as long as that hand and wrist is there and, and the can opener is working good, I think once I get him out of position, it won't be, you know, that big of a deal. It's, there's other things I need to work on, you know, more than worry about the shoulder not being strong enough to beat the uh, Haji. That's good because uh, I'm uh, I'm very interested in that match. You know, uh, yeah. that will be one of the few matches where you you will not go in as a favorite. You know, yeah. because Haji is younger, he's bigger right now from when you last met. You know, all those things. But for me, it's an interesting match. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And I've pulled him before, so I know what to expect. I know he's not. You know, people might say he's fast, but he's not. He's not dangerous explosive fast like arson i mean i, I feel like i would okay. go into it being able to you know matches matches hit and hopefully we'll have a a good equal start and and be able to go from there so but so the, the weight is going to be the tricky tricky part which um, i've been trying to lose weight trying to lose weight finally this morning i stepped on the scale i was 228 i'm like yes i'm under 230 <laughs> I, I've been I've been struggling for like the last month and a half and nothing like my body's just saying fuck you you're not losing any weight <laughs> it just it just completely is shut you know um, it shut shuts down when I don't eat so it's like yeah it, it's been very frustrating uh, but now it's, it's finally starting to you know come down a little bit so we'll see I don't I don't think I have to do much uh, water cut for. Uh, Paul, I think we did, I think we discussed or we decided two and a quarter. So I can make, you know, I can make two and a quarter here in about an hour if I wanted to. So, okay. But I want to, I want to get, I want to get a little lighter. I still got this. I want I, I saw the video of me pulling Dimitri and I'm sitting down on that chair, winded and gas. I'm like, man, that, that, that old guy's got a gut. He needs to get rid of that, that beer belly. Jesus, that's, that looks horrible. But uh, yeah. So, so, I'm, I'm so you will go down on your beer intake? I have been. I haven't. I I was actually really good the last probably six, seven, eight weeks. Uh, I haven't really been wanting to even drink a lot. I think the naltrexone uh, has that effect. It doesn't doesn't make it such a, a fun, good time to to drink. So mm. uh, yeah, I've been I've been curbing my uh, my drinking. So which is it's been good, but. Yeah, I still I still eat the ice cream Sunday before I go to bed, which is bad. <laughs> yeah, well, get in shape, you know, John. You you you're the one. It's it's so, you know. There's no other sport than arm wrestling that we know of where someone you know who's considered go to who can come back. Yeah, yeah no, on the high highest level, level yeah. highest level. Yeah, no, it, it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, and. Getting in shape. Yeah. It's a, it's a funny, it's a funny line now as you, as you get older, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's, I don't have the energy to really even do like a lot of super weight, big weights, but I'm not even sure that weightlifting is a huge factor in the sport of arm wrestling. I've always believed that it's just the, you know, the long-term tendons and, and connective tissue and ligaments that we build from arm wrestling and um, just getting back into that and getting those all hardened up and, and, you know, get them, getting them used to that, that super high pressure is, is going to be, you know, enough of the key. Of course, the, the hand in the form is always something that has to be, has to be super strong. I mean, that's, that's the one factor that is kind of crosses over to just strong man stuff. I mean, you know, it's, it's something that needs to be there, but once, once that's there, I think everything else is, is, is bones and, joints and tendons and <laughs> you know those big fluffy biceps and big barreling <laughs> chest and big shoulders i mean yeah it, it, you know it's intimidating but yeah, yeah it doesn't really do a whole hell of a yeah. lot for the sport right i mean yeah abs don't help as well abs no. don't help yeah as well. oh yeah abs helps yeah <laughs> but uh, i want to talk about uh, what i call brazing training so when, whenever we put out a video, you know, it doesn't matter what we talk about, like pronation exercises, things like that. There's always a comment like, uh, why would I do these? John told me that you, or John said somewhere that you don't need to do any training, just pull on table. So I always, I, I have my, 
hypothesis about how you pulled on training in training. And then I talked with Todd Hutchings and he kind of explained me a little bit more. And he said, basically, you would go in positions and you work on those positions where you are the weakest. And, and Todd said, when you go home, all team thought that they could beat you because they felt like they were they were killing you in the training. But actually, right. you put yourself in the positions where you want to get stronger. Right. And the thing is, you know how most arm wrestling practices go. Everyone goes and everyone wants to arm wrestle. No one comes in with a game plan or training plan. They just want to arm wrestle. Can you explain your training methods? Because I don't think it has been explained like that. Yeah, well, I mean, that, and, and you, you, re, you need a, a bunch of very talented, good uh, arm wrestling training partners to make that approach, make my approach effective. I mean, if, if you're, if you got a bunch of guys that say just all they want to do is hit hard and win, that doesn't do me very much good. And we, we have a few of those where they just want to, you know, work on their starts and hit and, and build their egos and not really, uh, you know, give you a workout by pulling in. in and then be shocked when, when, when you blast them in competition, they're like, but you blasted <laughs> you in training. <laughs> right. I beat you all last week. What the hell happened? But yeah, no, um, I just, I, I just think it's, it's easier for me and it, 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 uh, fixes my brain to be able to be sharper on the table when I'm training hard with other arm wrestlers. It's maybe I can push myself a little harder and farther, uh, with weights because yeah, I mean, when I do the grippers or I do the rolling thunder things and the, I mean, I can, I can go to complete numb failure, but, um, is it is it quite the the same as as the jarring and the quickness and the speed and the and the, the agility and the movement and the thinking that goes on during during practice? No, so um, I almost yeah I've talked myself into believing anyway that it's it's counterproductive to let myself get used to being strong in such a such a one dimensional isolated area. Uh, I guess, I, mean, I don't know, sometimes I even think that maybe I would forget to, to change my muscle groups and to move and, and, and shift gears during a match if I'm, you know, been trained just to roar, roar, go this one direction <laughs> to a complete failure, you know, so, um, yeah, and it's, it's never been fun for me. I, I can put a lot more effort into training with other guys uh, and manipulating the matches that way than I ever could by by grabbing onto a cable or, or doing weights or bands mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah i agree you, you know there's like uh the gym training you know that we do it's mostly assistance training but the idea of like no one no one kind of trains like you you know when they go in they have a clear game plan you know i cannot do i cannot do this let's just work on this until i work get better on, at it, on it you know right you know, it's, it's very hard because everyone wants to arm wrestle. So, you know, you kind of learn yeah, and, to arm wrestle and, and you substitute with weights. Yeah. And you're right. I, I, I use, I use Kevin to use the, I, I, as a, as a chess player, I'm using the arm wrestlers, the other arm wrestlers as pawns <laughs> to, and I, and I basically arm wrestled them in their, in their strongest position because it gives me the best work. You know, if, it, if it's a shorter stockier guy and, he's easily top rolled or why would I be messing around on practice top rolling him? I mean, exactly. I, I pulled him right where he's at his very best. And, you know, yeah. why, you know, I'm, I'm going to utilize th those guys as strengths, not, not their weakness yeah. in practice. So it, well, that's the thing that I wanted, you know, if someone's listening, watching, they need to understand this. When you need go to practice, you need to really practice, not just trying to beat everyone. You know, there's right. there's occasions when you know it's kind of party and everyone just wants to arm us. That's fine. But when you come in with a game plan or or you have a competition, you know, just trying to beat everyone will not give you anything. You always right. know where you're the strongest. Right. right. And you but occasionally you need to shift gears and and go to the competitive mode. And I yeah. I miss I miss that because um you know, I, I have, and I, and I, maybe I blame some of my slowness and uh, um, lack of sharpness at tournaments because of too much practice and like that, where I, mm. I just don't ever really push Defensive myself in the, yeah. in the right directions and, and, be, and hit and be aggressive. It's, you, you've kind of conditioned your brain to just be slow and, and controlling and 
um, almost put yourself in the worst possible position because that's how you practice. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I could, I could understand the argument of, well, you know, you're not going to be super sharp at when come tournament time because you're, you know, you're, you're purposely slow, yeah. moving slow. And, and I, I do feel that sometimes I'm thinking, ah, I wish, I mean, I used to be able to turn it on and be, you know, a little, a little sharper, but that's where I, I think that um, for me anyway, going to tournaments and getting my butt, kicked or, or at least being reminded that, Hey, you ain't that great. <laughs> well, you know, sharpen me up to that next level to say, okay, now I need to, you know, I need to be going in there a little bit different, clearer mindset than, and just going in thinking, you know, I could do whatever. A little more aggressiveness. Yeah. I think there's, there's time and place for everything in armor thing. You can be, you know, aggressive, you can be passive, you can be defensive, you know, but uh, you, you cannot be just one thing. One thing will work might work but eventually someone will crack the code and it will fail as we yeah. see so many times in this sport yeah. yeah do you have like uh you know you you went to a competition and someone beat you and then you went back to training and you try to get what he was doing and trying to beat that was that kind of part of your training as well I, I, most of the people that have beaten me um I've, I've left not thinking i needed to get stronger i, I left thinking I need to figure out a different way. I need to, mm -hmm. there's, there's a way, I mean, everybody's built us with certain strengths and abilities and cracking the code was not me getting stronger. It was mm -hmm. me figuring yeah. out, you know, I want to practice with that guy after the tournament's mm -hmm. over and just, and pull a hundred different matches, a hundred mm -hmm. different ways. And then I realized, Oh, okay, this works now. Now, now I can go home and train and make sure that I'm able to dictate the match into that, into that, you know, that lane, that zone. So. Yeah, because because the easy answer is oh, everyone's like just get stronger. You need get, get stronger. stronger. I'm like yeah. yeah, you can you can hit it, you know, thousand times and you might win one, but you might hit it a little differently and you might win half. You know, because right. like you said, everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses, and you right. can always play into one. You may so, sometimes you know the match will look like it's so easy, like half a second, and guy will just change you know direction from going just all side press to going all back pressure changes changes you know, yeah yeah well and like i said most of the most of the top top guys have got their ace got their silver bullet that because they're built a certain way like sasha i mean he's built stout short i mean i just don't I mean, although he he performed very well and showed that he can top roll with the best of them um that guy just i mean i look i just even without pulling him i would look at him and say okay this is a stereotype of this guy he's do not hook this guy. Do not go wrist to wrist. I mean, that's just, it's just a bad yeah. choice. Yeah. So, I mean, the top guys typically have their, their top technique just because of their build. And, and the, and the key is to take them away from that, that mm -hmm. strength by dictating the match, being strong enough. Eh, you got to be strong enough, but you also, yeah, you have to make it your match, not their match. In, in uh, you know, when you were coming up, uh, how many times did you practice in a week? Oh, when I was a kid, when I first started uh, in the sport, I would arm wrestle my dad almost every single day. I mean, um, and in listening to Michael and Devin talk, um, I, I, I'm almost thinking that I might want to try to dabble into trying to do that again, just to see what, what it would do to me, if it would it might, it might hurt me badly. <laughs> I feel like it's, it would, it would do something and, and I would be hurt, but uh, you know, in my younger years, I would do what they're doing and, and pull almost, a, you know, an hour, two hours. We'd, we'd pull, I'd pull up with Dave Patton in the early, early years before we went and work trees all day. And then after we came back from working trees all day, we'd get on the table and pull for another couple hours. And we did it on a daily basis. I remember having my arm hanging out the window, going to a job after we've been arm wrestling because we, we'd arm wrestled, you know, every day in, in a row. And it, the, the top of my arm would just be throbbing like a toothache. It was just, you know, so overtrained, but I, I got better. I got stronger. I mean, it, 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 it worked. So, um, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's probably, there's gotta be a hump there that I don't know. I'm going to try it. Maybe I'll try it. I, no, I won't try it. I, I say, I, I think about trying it, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck with the once a week and trying to, trying to um, recuperate. I don't have enough guys in the area to push me to, to do the every single day thing. Like, like we used to. Yeah. But yeah. When, when you're young, I mean, I could tell, you know, 
I would advise people if you're super young in the sport that, that just listening to your body and being careful and not, you know, banging in super crazy. If you ease into it and warm up real well, that you can pull on a, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. It's, I think it is I safe think, and effective. Yeah. It, it's the problem is everyone bangs up their self in the training so much that, you know, but uh, you can pull smart, you know, you can just today work on top roll, today work on hook, just today sitting in static positions, you know, the different stuff you can do with always uh, pretty much what Bulgarians are doing on daily yeah. basis. And I don't know, I don't know, there must be some science out there. I just haven't heard of it. Um, is that what builds tendons strength? I mean, yeah, of course. Everything that you do for your muscle is it is it a daily strength. thing though, where you just kind of work through it and and that that's what builds these massive cords of tendon versus versus the you know a bodybuilder trying to build muscle for moving weight. We're we're in a different different group than that. Yeah, we are in different group, and the, probably uh, the thing is you know the the uh, I don't know the bounce back is about two weeks ahead. So if you had like seven days of hard training or, or whatever training of on table every day, you, you will see the benefits in, in about 14 days after that, right. because the okay. tendons take so much time to recover, so much time. but if you continue to arm muscle, you know, it, it might come, but it will, it will be slow process. It, you it might push the goalpost further. So this is why, you know, when guys are preparing for big competitions, sometimes they will take like, I don't know, five days of rest, like complete right. rest, you know, nothing for right. tennis. And they will not be in that tipped up shape. And we week, right. week later in different tournament, they're just monsters destroying because you right. know they went to that recovery phase. Right. So there, there is science behind it and it works, it really does work. But the problem is people overdo it and then they kind of uh, hit on their own recovery because you want to come in a little bit fresher, but you're always behind, 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 and getting lower, lower, lower. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so make maybe some kind of system where you, you know pull three days in a row then rest for four days i think that could be you know really beneficial right. yeah well I've, I've had this argument and, I, and that's been my experience that it takes 10 days two weeks maybe two and a half weeks to really feel like my yeah. tendons are super tight and super yeah. healed and super hard where i can Every, go massive, no, massive no pain and everything's right. like i might i might not be able to lift as much weight but exactly who, who cares i can't lift half the weight or a yeah. third of the weight of a lot of these weightlifters anyway so i mean i don't think i don't think that's really the 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 gauge that people should be using to say okay well i did my one max rep and um my yeah. one max rep will be you know lower and if i rested for two days or three days well it's i think it's i think it's different i i, I like the, the one rep max is for me they don't work because you know it doesn't matter because you can I can lift on back pressure and I might change my angle a little bit and I never use it on table, but you know, on table right. I'm here. So for me, the, the, the big weights or something that should be indicator on your physical condition. So if you're lifting heavier than before, you physically are stronger. If you're lifting about the same, you're pretty much that. But for me, it's always been fresher, fresher. Yeah. You are better. You are so, right. so, you know, like two weeks before we, we still do training, you know, like with weights, but it comes down to 80, 90%, no more. And last week, so almost completely off just some tendon work, you know, for, sorry, band work for tendons right. and things like that. And then you, you know, I feel good. This, this right. system pretty much works. And they've been doing it for this year and, you know, felt yeah. good. Yeah, we're on the same page as far as uh, my experience, like I said, is, is, is pull hard, stress the tendons hard, but you know, it's not about it being in shape. It's it's conditioning those tendons and then figuring out the best way to be healed for, the, you know, the hard test again. <laughs> I mean, it's so. Anyway, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, and you know, you know, when you when you kind of in the zone in the training zone, you know, you can do it week after week, and you you if you don't go super heavy or too much, you'll feel pretty much the same, and you feel very good. But when you take rest on the competition, you feel good, but you will know next day you feel real bad because everything, you know, it's, right. it's, it's you were able to eat, eat yeah. even that much more heightened. And down. then, poof, and right. <laughs> next right, right, week right. is done. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think also too, the, the speed factor too, when you're super fresh, you're, you can really, you yeah. can, I just, you feel like you can move quicker. You know how, if you got somewhat of a half, half pump and you're only three days in the, in the rest, you just feel like, 
yeah, you might be stronger, but it's a slow warm. I got to warm up to get my max strength. You know, you, you don't have that, that jolt and that, that reflex and the speed that, you know, that you get when you actually rest for a week and a half, two weeks. Yes. Yes. I wonder what boxers, I, you know, they'd, they'd be, I'd be curious to know how long boxers, we uh, should, they got to ask Devin. They gotta, we they just need to ask Devin. <laughs> nah, not Devin. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bad man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks like, like they're having a bunch of fun down in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like, I think they just announced it like a week ago, you know? Yeah. No, that's, that's crazy. That's silly. I, I don't understand. Yeah. I don't I, understand that at all. Yeah. Well, maybe just because it's Mr. Olympia, you know, that's why. But yeah, uh, and maybe they maybe they just don't want a lot of professional arm wrestlers there. Maybe yeah, because half of the or, world would gotten there, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe no there's players. maybe there's a reason behind their madness, but it doesn't seem <laughs> doesn't seem right for a, a normal promoter to be, you know, springing it on the, the arm wrestling community a week out. Hey, yeah, big tournament, monster <laughs> tournament. <laughs> yeah. So who, wants who wants ten k? Who wants ten k? Yeah, who wants ten k? <laughs> 10k for everyone you know yeah there's uh not a lot of faith in that but we'll see we'll see we'll see yeah <laughs> so uh you've been around for quite some time in arm wrestling uh what <laughs> has social media changed arm wrestling more than anything else hmm. i think so yeah for sure everybody everybody knows what's going on everybody's um, it's gotten personal. I mean, it's, it's, you're able to know Michael Todd, you're able to know Devin Lorette, you're able to know pretty much anybody that you want to know. Everybody's got a YouTube channel. Now I'm, I think I'm the last one to actually have something, <laughs> but, um, well, maybe Dave Chapey doesn't have one yet. That's, that's good, but I'm sure he's Dave, right, Dave right, doesn't right talk. behind us. Yeah. Dave doesn't talk, but he will eventually. <laughs> and we'll all get to know Dave here shortly, but yeah, no, it's, yeah, it just makes it more, I don't know. Yeah. You got you to gotta be able to be exposed to it. And we didn't have the exposure with TV yeah. all those years. So nobody knew it even existed. But now if anybody's curious and they type the word arm or arm wrestling and, and do a Google search, boom, they're yeah. inundated by millions of <laughs> videos. Yeah. So I think, yeah. you, you know, back in the, not, not, not so long ago, about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, everyone was trying to get on TV. You know, let's get arm wrestling on TV, and then it's going to be. And I think like arm wrestling has always been kind of on TV somewhere, you know, and right. in, in Eurosport, Arm Wars, and ESPN, and uh, Game of Arms, and all that good stuff. It wasn't, you know, nothing really did happen for us. Now right. it's like crazy, you know. Right, it's, right. It's, it's available. It's available all the time, twenty four seven. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I, you know, I don't even. I I actually hate watching the the main networks anymore. I mean, it's just nothing but news. Their, their shows are crap. I mean, if I'm watching TV, it's normally YouTube now, YouTube or Netflix. You know, yeah. So. <laughs> I, I don't subscribe. I haven't subscribed to a TV in seven years or something. And just Netflix on YouTube. That's yeah, it. No, and I'm 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 slowly getting hooked into the. I've only I've only subscribed to I I just, I just subscribed to three I think Michael Devin and Brian so but that's enough I mean um, and then of course you know the the channels come up with chance and you know, yeah yeah hell I don't have enough time of the day to to keep up with the, all the drama and the the uh, <laughs> oh. I mean if I had to watch all you know yeah all, all the, the stuff that's out drama. all the stuff that's out there on a yeah you know that's being produced on a daily basis it's it's overwhelming I mean it's yeah yeah it's it's more than you know sometimes i i just sit down and i'm like dude what do i watch and i'm like 20 different videos just came out right you just look like yeah, three what's hours later you're, you're sitting there listening to a couple guys on the couch still you know like what the hell am i doing but yeah. it's it's, inter- it's more interesting than the damn news so yeah it, it's good that we have it you know for arm wrestling it's it's so great. Arm wrestling community has been way behind for everything else. Like I'm deep in powerlifting and powerlifting community. You know, they have, they have big major superstars and they have like hundreds of podcasts and everything else. And we just kind of behind, but yeah. uh, the traction we're getting, because I would say arm wrestling is more interesting than powerlifting. Someone lifts weight for one second, you're like, fine. But when someone, you know, they're, they're deep in a hook and it's, it's a screamer, it's right. fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a fight aspect to it. So it's, yeah. it's strength with a little bit of, a little bit of fight. So. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
I know it's a weird question, but um, how does it feel to be considered GOAT in arm wrestling? Uh, I've always tried to, I guess, avoid it and downplay it um, and just, yeah, just go, oh, yeah, go, go out, whatever. Come on, John, go yeah, hard. Whatever, whatever. Just go hard. Just go hard. <laughs> go you're hard. Like, yeah, go hard. Yeah. You, you just win and you're like, what did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to play, I'm trying to play that. Uh, that role a little bit more and more. I've been exposed to, you know, the, 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 the uh, Travis's of the world, I guess, to be a little bit more of a showman, but it's, it's difficult for me. I'm, I'm more mm-hmm. like Dave Chafee, you know, I like to win and then just kind of sneak out the back door and, and not have anybody notice. And, um, you know, yeah. not very social. I've actually been called a, yeah. you know, introvert, you know, yeah, you're just, a, you're an introvert. You don't even like people, do you? Like, uh, how could you tell? <laughs> <laughs> what was the tell? Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. but do, do you feel? Do you feel? Because you know, I, I think there's a lot of love in arm wrestling. You know, for the arm wrestling and for you. You know, yeah. as as a you, one of the biggest inspirations in arm wrestling sport. A lot of people who join now, they see Devon. You know, he and he's you know charisma and everything is there for Devon. But you know, when I started and everything, everyone else started. There was just one inspiration. You know. Do you well, feel thank, that? Thank, thank goodness that people recorded and had cameras back 20, 25 years ago. And that footage is now being, you know, sent out and streamed uh, thanks to Gary Roberts and, and many others. And uh, there's so much footage still that's in somebody's closet right now that has never been seen and shown that, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's been nice as far as, you know, getting, getting my, um, my past, my history, my, my arm wrestling career out there so um yeah the internet's been been crazy like that i haven't you know well i haven't competed in five years and really only a few times before that and um yeah i get people recognize me as the arm wrestler I'm like dude i have an arm wrestling many years it's it's, <laughs> it's it's like a tattoo it's for life yeah yeah that's yeah. nice do you get recognized on the street i think um, and in your not very often i i i i Get people whispering over uh, to to my wife, you know, hey, that's that's you know, that's is that your husband? He's he's the arm wrestler, right? Or, you know, and I, it it occasionally happened to me when I'm standing in the jetway and people are um, getting off the airplane. Someone will stop and then turn and double take, and I can see them reaching for their phone. And here they come; they're gonna get a you know a selfie or a picture. I gotta get a picture of you. And I'm like, yeah. Or what you know I, I play dumb like what do you what do you need what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> who are you <laughs> yeah. but yeah it's cool i i think it's I, I think it would be weird for everyone but uh man y- your career has been you know just amazing you know it's uh i'm, I'm looking you know at our wrestling scene right now and i'm like there will not be a guy like you in in a lower weight class that can hang with the heavyweights for quite some yeah. time you know. Well, arm wrestling was different for the first 10, 15, 20, 30 years that I was in it. I mean, it, it really was a, a, a closet, unique, special group. It's not, I, I don't, I'm not going to classify arm wrestling as like mainstream now, but um, it's, but, it's there's 20, but there's more, there's 20, it's 20 fold now. Yeah. There's, there's killers hiding everywhere in every state now in every country that's, that um, nobody knows or hears about that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's completely different you know even i was talking around you know, the last night or the night before last and i mean there there was some great arm wrestlers back 25 30 years ago but there was always just the one or two or you know mm. maybe you find somebody that would give johnny walker a hard time or dave pat but they were so you know above everybody else mm. um and yeah i guess i don't know i guess people just didn't weren't hungry to they would get beat by someone like Dave and go, Oh, like, Oh, you know, I, I, I can't do what am I, I can't even, you know, especially yeah. if you're a strength guy and then all of a sudden this little 150 pounder just kills you. So it, I think it discouraged uh, a lot of people for, for, for pursuing the sport, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's completely changed now. There's so many people that are, that are, that are pursuing it and, and have gotten, you know, really good at it. And it's, Millions of matches out there for sure have for people that we don't know about yet. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, one of, one of the interesting things was when I was in Dubai that uh, usually bodybuilders, power, they will never go near our missing table. It was like, 
I'm going to break my arm just by looking at it, you know, so right. you just stay. Oh, away. that might be the case. <laughs> yeah. And, but you know, that Larry and Adam there and they bring everyone, everyone comes to Armistice Day and they try and they go to practices on Friday. So I think in, in next three, four years, we'll see something really different, you know? Different, we'll, yeah. Because yeah. a lot of guys with a great strength background and, we will find those talents because I'm wrestling right. to be good at arm wrestling. Like everyone's like, we need just need a big guy and he will beat Levon. <laughs> sure. It's not that it's, 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 a, it's a specialty. It's yeah. definitely a specialty. And it, well, as long as those guys understand that, I mean, that was always, the, I think the problem in the past, you know, big power lifter, weight lifter. They didn't lifter. understand it. Look, they did, yeah. They just felt embarrassed by the fact that some little scrawny, you know, cowboy looking guy would, would crush them. But um, I think, I think the knowledge is out there enough where people, realize that it's a commitment of three at least i would say at least three years before those tendons can really start to show what they're capable of doing uh you know for those guys like larry and and, and you know guys that may have just incredible potential um they have to take they have to put in the work in a, and, in a and take time completely, completely take time. different different way than they're used to <laughs> oh yeah and it'll come so yeah Arm wrestling is like uh, when I have arm wrestle with someone, you know, like uh, who's super strong, like strong bands and, you know, beat them. And they're like, ah, and they have these excuses. And I'm like, just yeah, look at it like, or something. yeah, it's a trick. I'm like, just look at it like this. If you would go to jujitsu, you'd find like the smallest guy and they would submit you. As, this is what I'm doing. Cause I know what I'm doing. You don't know. And they're like, oh, makes sense. You know? And then they don't feel that bad about themselves. Right. I'm like, and they're like, oh, how can I learn? I'm like, well, it takes some time. It takes some time. You never know how long for everyone, you know. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, arm, arm wrestling is, is cool in that way. I, I like it because it's so, do you, do you still, um, how to say, discover new things? Um, yeah. or, or more I'm of reminded of, I'm remi- I'm, Yeah. <laughs> I'm reminded of old things. <laughs> it, go, it goes in, yeah, it's, it's one big circle. Like, oh, shoot, I need, yeah, I remember that. Or, or <clears throat> Why didn't I do that? Because I re- I've been exposed to that before, and I, that guy is just like that guy, you know? So, but yeah, no, um, it's, a, it's always a learning process because you're always trying to evolve into something that you're not, and then you lose sight of what you were and you, mm. what you had. So yeah. it, it, you know, it comes back around like, well, I, I used to do that. Now I don't do that anymore. Yeah. I should get back to doing that again. I, so um, it's, it's never ending, but um, yeah. I say uh, arm wrestling techniques are like playing ball on, on Wednesdays. So if you play ball with your friends, let's, you know, that doesn't have basketball on Wednesdays, every Wednesday, but one week you skip it. Next week you forget that you have to play the ball. Right. And that's how you move on in life. Until one day they're like, dude, why are you not coming to play the ball? Right. Same thing with armistice techniques. That's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, still, yeah, go ahead. I, I want to ask you this is the question I ask everyone, and um, everyone has a different answer. But, uh, you know, why do you love armistice? What's. What's the thing that attracts you? Uh, yeah, I for initially for me it was uh, family. It was something that my my dad did and that we could do together. And and then it became the people that I met and knew. So then it became the extended arm wrestling family that was always fun to 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 uh, to get together with again and again and again and again and 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 and, and you know test our our strengths and our abilities when we we're away. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, the simple answer is just the community, right? I mean, just uh, the, the competitiveness and the excitement of competing against guys that you've become friends with. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, and, you know, bring, bringing it back to just even, you know, keeping it local in practice, the, the best thing about arm wrestling is always just the camaraderie and the fun and hanging out and, and working together for a common, you know, common goal with with you know buddies on a, uh, on a weekly basis and anyway, so yeah it, the community is i think one of the biggest part and yeah. people armistice community is so so great like 
you know, I don't know, maybe every sport has it the same, but I almost think it's like, you know, when we go to competition somewhere, everyone hangs together. There's right. usually it's like, no, everyone hangs together and we, you know, go places and, <laughs> right. Right. you know. And, 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 are, and are willing to tell the, their competitor exactly what they need to do to be, beat you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, what other uh, sport does that? Yeah, what other sport tells the guy after a few beers, this is what you need to do to beat me. You should be working on this. <laughs> My chance and comes down it's like this is what i did this is what oh right oh. right right right, right, right. Yeah. yeah and and everyone gets better because of that so mm -hmm. I, th I think arm wrestling is very special in that way yeah. uh yeah i want to thank you john i will not take more of your time all right, all right. i appreciate it what 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 is this your uh, personal channel i know i've seen you on um the fix and um a couple other uh, yeah this is this will be on voice of arm wrestling this will be on oh. voice of arm wrestling yeah okay Cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you having me. And uh, maybe I have you on my channel when I get a little bit smoother. And oh, yeah. A, uh, studio and link link to John's channel is in description. Go there. He already got like 25,000 subscribers growing faster than anyone else. Yeah, uh, that's I all I need right now. I need, absolutely I need to hone, love I need to hone my skills now. I need to get some. I, you know, I did the, I did the interview with uh, Ron yesterday and I'm like, I'm, I'm the guy that normally gets interviewed. I'm I'm probably the, the worst, the most horrible interviewer. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you yeah. just sit oh, there. That's you, what I try to do. That's like, what hey, I try to do. Remember 1999? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm always I'm always afraid of that awkward <laughs> silence. Like, uh, I don't have anything else to ask you, Rod. You know, is it time to say goodbye? <laughs> yeah. And I did that a few times. Like, well, dude, I you know, I guess we could probably talk forever if I was a little looser. Or, you know, but, you you, yeah, you, start, I, you start you start with a beer. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way with on the phone. My wife can talk to whoever on the phone for hours and hours and hours. And there's always like a five minute, like no one's talking. You should get off the phone now. It's you know, but when when there's that silence for me at at any point in the conversation, it's like, oh, okay, that's that means I need to stop talking and we need to hang up. <laughs> Go away. Yeah, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Yeah. yeah. I, I I love the one uh, the video where you try to edit, where you were editing and you added that sound. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> and I didn't have very many sounds to choose from. I think that was really the only crazy cartoonish sound that I, yeah. I, I think that was off iMovie, you know, sound effects. I thought, yeah. okay, I need a, I need a, I need a boing or a little, but. Man, it's, know, so, it's, I'll, it's so good to see you back in arm wrestling world. And like, um, when I was in Moldova, we, we, were, we did that interview in Moldova 2018, I think, you know, right. I saw you. And you didn't look happy. You didn't look like you want to be there, you know. And now you're a completely different person. Yeah. 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 Well, my noble kind of got sprung on me last minute. And, of course, I couldn't refuse to be part of something so spectacular like that. But, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is a little awkward for me to be going into things like that and not really being competitive and being mm. really super active in the sport. It's, yeah. But, yeah, but it's still fun. Well, yeah, it was fun. Although it was fun, although it was very yeah, fun. Still fun. <laughs> okay. All right, Ray. Thank Thanks you, John. Again. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, take care. Talk Bye. to you soon.